My name's Guy Kessivan, and I've been a professional mountain bike tester for nearly 25 years. And today, I'm at Cody Brennan on the Levo SL from Specialized to see how much of the original Trail Center menu I can get through on that 320 watt hour battery and whether I have to use the range extender with none other than Joe from uh, Bikes Brennan, the fantastic shop where you can rent uh, Levo SLs and standard Levos and other bikes to play on these trails yourself. So, beautiful day, let's crack on. So, this ain't my first rodeo on the Levo SL. Actually ridden one a fair amount in different places. And so, I get where it sits in the specialized line. You know, this lightweight battery idea wouldn't work for everyone, but because they've already got it covered for, you know, sort of general trail use with the Levo, with Joe's riding up ahead, and heavy duty use with the Canevo, this SL with the smaller battery and the SL 1.1 motor at the Creo road bike really makes sense as a lightweight, agile trail bike for hopping and popping like this. But the one question kind of everyone is asking, how far can you actually go on one? You know, does having the smaller motor with less power draw out of it mean you can eke out the battery further than you might think? So, I figured, why not come to Cody Brennan to find out, not least, because Joe will hire you an SL or a Levo to try yourself. And that's proving super popular for a shop, because obviously Cody Brennan's the original UK trail centre, but there's no uplift here. You know, all the climbs you do yourself. So, unsurprisingly, super popular for the e-bike ride. So, what are we dealing with with this Levo XL? 150 mil point. It's the same chassis as that Levo up the head that Joe's riding. Well, Joe's on an alloy bike. I'm on a carbon bike, but apart from the motor mount down the bottom, this is basically, <laughs> great, this is awesome. This is basically the same bike. So, 150 mil travel, front rear. 455 mil reach, 66 degree head angle, 74 seat. So, you know, typically for specialized trail stuff, not that radical, but it's actually 10 mil longer than the self-propelled Stumpy. And this SL, because of the smaller motor, the back end is also really nipped in tight. So 437 mil chainstay length, which is actually the same as the Stump Jump. So a little more stable up front because it's also half a degree slacker. But just as agile in terms of wheelbase. Whereas Joe's bike, a bit longer, but similar angles up front. But I can already tell you, you know, when we hit these climbs, we're both running an eco because we got a big day out, but definitely have to work harder on the SL. I mean, to be fair, it doesn't seem to be massively so. So obviously this bike's a lot lighter. I mean, depending on model, even carbon versus carbon, it's between three and four kilos lighter than the full Levo. I can tell Joe knows where he's going. I haven't ridden this for two years since I was here with BKXC. <laughs> Seems like a long time ago. But as you can see, Joe's just powering away while I'm going down the gears. And that's another point before I forget. These, this comes with a full Eagle shifter, so you have got a now it's showing off. Look after the gears a bit better. Whereas that lever up ahead, it's got the more foolproof single shift 
But when things turn suddenly and you need to dump the gears, then it's good to have that facility. Whew. Yeah, he's gone. I have to try a cheeky bit of trail. Oh, yeah, that's noticeably better. But one thing that is good is even in eco, even though you're only dealing with 35 newton meters of torque, 240 watts top out compared to 90 meters on the bros in Joe's bike, it still feels like you've definitely got some assistance, even in eco. And then trail is definitely a helping hand for moments like this. And if you do need a bit more punch for this section, up you go, into turbo. And because the button's right there, and your thumb, it's nice and easy to toggle it back down. Keep saving that battery, now it's leveled out. Ah. Right. Right. Oh, Joe's just made me feel a bit better. I confess he actually flew it into trail for that climb just to show me up without telling me the swine. <laughs> ah. Known Joe for a long old time. It's good to know. Still a wily old trail fox, eh, mother? And there are some kick compromises in terms of sort of toughness, weight, to get that overall bike weight down. You've got 2.3 Greek tyres, both ends, rather than the uh, Black Diamond on the back of Black Diamond 2.6s on the Levos. You've got a Fox 34 up front, not a Fox 36. You've got guide brakes with the 180mm rear rotor, not coats with the 200. But I have to say, it certainly doesn't hold it back. And interestingly, when I had it at Stainburn, it's actually the fastest bike, powered or unpowered, I've taken down the red descent line, which I have got to have ridden so many times. So that's pretty impressive. And because it's got that short back end, the agility, when you're following a local on trails like this, and you're just making it up as you go along, Oh, it is awesome. I mean, there are moments when that 34 fork whoo, is clearly getting worked right to the edge. But even then, it's actually the e-bike chassis, so same as the rhythm fork, so it's a stronger, heavier setup than the normal 34. And you're getting a grip damper, which is just, even in its basic format, feels absolutely awesome on this performance elite fork. I'm pretty sure it was about here, my pedal came off the BKXC and they ejected right, so I made double sure to do them up properly to see if we can add that clip in. But it is just such a rideable. It just feels like a normal bike. I'm in the eco here, so I'm hustling the climbs on my own, not even aware of the motor, but then I'm not aware of it upsetting the balance. Because it's a very neat package, the way the battery's built in, the motor's built in, but it's not especially low or anything like that. So reducing the mass really makes a difference with the maneuverability. And Cody Brennan is just such an awesome place for an agile, sort of infectiously playful bike like this. I can remember, this is one of the very first sections they opened. I think it was one of the first bit or not. No, I'm not trying to be that guy who saw the band first, but we literally were. One of the first people to ride here. Me, Jeff Wall, photographer, and Brant, my editor on NBR. We were meant to go and do a shoot in the Falklands. But we got to the airfield in our transit van for the bikes. And I'm like, oh no, I can't go, sorry. You know, and a body issue. So, and Brant was just like, oh shit, what are you gonna do? He's like, oh hang on, there's this Welsh forestry boat. 
uh, Daffy Davis. He says he's made this trail just for mountain bikers. We should go and see that. So he literally just rallied the transit over that night and hit the trails in the morning. It's just like, oh my god. But there was nothing else like this anywhere. And to be fair, there still isn't this much just raw, proper trail where it's actually been built in respect to the landscape, you know? It's not just been slapped over the top like a big BMX track. You know, it's built in reference. Because they had absolutely zero money. That's why, I mean, Daffy and his couple of mates, Simon and Gogsy, were just, you know, building it basically as a hobby. I mean, he was a forestry ranger, but literally carving it out by hand with shovels and pick. It was, so it had to be super economical. And it's just, it's actually got better and better over time. You know, it used to be relatively, I mean, this is relatively smooth, this bit, but you can see in a lot of places, thank God, we're going back 25 years now, nearly, where it's weathered now, it's like all the teeth have come through into the foundations, and that's perfect for reflecting the bikes. In fact, the bikes have got in a lot more capable, a lot smoother, you know. I'm talking about 150 mil travel bike with 29 wheels, being a relatively lightweight, agile trail bike. You know, so it's still just a totally unique place to ride that you know, a lot of people don't even know about, that's the thing. A whole generation of bikers, you think, biking in you know, parks in Wales involves getting a minibus up the top of somewhere. I bought Park Wales or Revolution, which is great, but this, this we're in proper mountain territory. Just amazing. So we're kind of uh, top of the beast now, uh, just about to drop down into the really fun stuff. Uh, as you can see, we've done 25K, 68% uh, battery left, hour and a half, and 35% uh, assist. So it's still an eco. And uh, you've done about the same on your battery, aren't you, Joe? Left. Yeah, so interesting. I mean, I'm you know, I've definitely been working this morning. I've got a fair old sweat on in my hoodie. Uh, could have gone lighter, but it was cold this morning. But you know, I have to say, the battery's lasting a lot better than I expected. I thought you know, we'd be eking it out to do the beast, but looks like we might be able to tack some more trails on as well. And when they're you know, scenery like this with a mate like this to ride with, happy days. Oh, and here we go. Probably my favourite section of Cody, this. What's this one called, Joe? It's part of the Adams family. And it is so good, this section. Proper old school, twisty, turning. And to be fair, that's exactly where this Levo SL or Levo geometry comes alive. And the fact it is, you know, quite pliable, it's not just super stable, heavy, wow. Because every moment, I'm kind of like, whoa, that fork twisted, or that 28 spoke carbon front wheel, you know, got a bit out of line, or the grid tire is a bit skinny, got a bit sketchy. There's another moment where it just flicks in like that, and now just get that little bit more kick through the pedals. And it just flicks and pops and just plays more. It is just, you know, it's a proper trail bike. And definitely, you know, there's a phase with mountain bikes, where you, e bikes, where you just go, well, it's got a motor, so why not just basically have a downhill bike, have as much travel as you want, have massive tires, so you can plow through stuff. And, you know, there is definitely a place for those kind of bikes. That's why there is a Kinevo. Oh, you know, with boxes on the front. You know, self uplifting, self uplift bikes. Of course there's a place for them, but I think in the same way that a lot of people are going to like shorter travel trail bikes now. It's just, it's really easy to overbike e-bikes in that same way. And that's where this Levo SL really does feel fantastic. I mean the lightest bikes, the S-Works bikes, are down to like 17 kilos. I and mean, this is well under 20k 
it's expert carbon because you're getting carbon wheels and the other thing the suspension really really <laughs> suits this kind of e-bike use i mean specialized always feel a little bit saggy under power when you're pedaling them yourself so and even on this corners i'm running it in trail three modes on this dps shot you know i'm doing sort of middle setting to get some compression firmness and support but when you kick like that you've got some drive for it but because it is so fluid because the brakes aren't influencing or anything like that you just properly pump and play on this bike it just flows really nicely through stuff and the motor itself picks up in a really really broad range of like cadence and torque so well you know it isn't adding a huge amount of power it digs it up from deep like that you know so you only need a couple of pedal strokes to get that benefit and it is noticeable even in eco that short back end here just you know helping me keep on toes longer back end on his lever because he's the guy who knows these trails plus He's a proper handy rider, so it's great to have him guiding me through. Oh, this is just, you know, I could just add that little bulletin update there. 68% battery, 25 k hour and a half. That's some decent distance and speed. And a fair amount of capacity left, so happy days, we're on. We are definitely on. <laughs> oh, look at this place. This is just amazing. Daffod, you really did create something incredible, mate. Really. And this is where the seed got planted. The trail centres all through Wales and the UK, you know, everywhere in the UK. Kind of has its origins, the success of Cody Brennan, bringing people to the furthest, kind of, most distant part of Wales. It's come and ride pure mountain bike destination and the benefits it brought to the local economy and everything which is so obvious it got templated out all over the place <laughs> and it's still such a good ride yeah, and even this 34 I know for a fact yeah it's you know not as accurate I feel it's definitely softer. Front end's a little bit mustier as I'm coming into stuff. Taking when you really turn hard, it kind of hangs up. But on the other hand, my hands are feeling perfectly fresh still, even after a proper punishing sections like this. And I know if I was on 36s, like Joe is, I would be getting serious arm pump. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> You have got to come to Cody Brennan. You've never been here. You have to come. And even if you have, come back. It's better than you imagine. However good you remember it being, it is so much better. So good. And when I came here with Brian, he's ridden all over the world. And he still says, one of my favorite places he's ever ridden. <laughs> oh, don't get too carried away though. <laughs> Yeah, that was epic! <laughs> oh. Oh, damn it! <laughs> GoPro fail. Joe's left me on Uncle Fester. How can you leave the bald one behind on the trail made after him? <laughs> and that, you know, that ability to just pump, slide, twist, just, you know, get more dynamic with the bike. Oh, I missed that jump though. That's the real hallmark of this SL. <laughs> so even if you have to you know, pull it back in line after that section, the fact it gets up there and pops around. Well, that's why and this bike is definitely a really valid Really, something crazy, super enjoyable. Addition to the Levo range. 
We're awfully loving this. Just made so much sense on the trail. Even if the numbers often kind of don't make sense actually on the page, on the website, once you actually start riding it, oh, Joe's been a gentle way for me. It's just proper, proper pop and play bike. It really is. I've seen the same feedback from like guys like Robbie who rides EMTV. It's a great video where we time both bikes and yeah, the Levo definitely can just push and plow through more stuff. And even then, that's a pretty agile bike. But this is just next level. <laughs> and it's just little things like, you know, coming out of these classic trail center switchback turns. You've just got a little bit of extra help popping you back up to speed. So it's just far easier on your legs. Just keeps the stoke levels up and the suffering levels down. Even in eco mode, which yeah, I am genuinely surprised by how much that makes a difference. Because it's 35% of not all. It's 35% of not a lot, but it's still significant. You know, even if you're pretty fit, like I am. So, if you've been off your bike for a while, or you're just building fitness up, it really does unlock a lot more riding. <laughs> so, that's it then. End of the beach. Beginning of the end, this is. So, so far, it looks like I've still got that. 60% battery left, which I have to say, I'm amazed by. 30 odd K now. I mean, I've been working. I'll be interested to see what the wattage feedback is, because the Mission Control app actually gives you kind of information on how you, how hard you've been working, as well as how hard the bike's been working. But so far, just had a superb ride. You know, the bike ain't perfect. There are parts of it that compromise. You know, I, I would like it to have short offset fork for a bit more stability. Front tyre, front end can get a bit squirrely when you're really loaded and hard or you have to turn suddenly. But, like you say, on the flip side, it really makes a significant difference in the amount of weight that you've got to pump and push and throw about. And that's where this bike absolutely scores. It's just kind of how normal it feels. Just with a higher amount of grinning, a higher average speed, and a higher likelihood of you doing a really big ride and not suffering massively because of it. <laughs> ah. Can't really have a picture. That'd be rude. Who you knows? As much as I'm mithering about some of the details, you can see it's still a really controlled, a really capable bike. I mean, this is running a pool noodle in the back like all Joe's high bikes do, so it's a little bit heavier, a little bit more armoured. That's it. That's it. But, you know, it's, I have to say, this expert carbon version is pretty damn good value too. Certainly compared to standard Levo, I mean, it's, 250 quid more, but you're actually getting carbon wheels. So significantly lighter, more playful wheel pack. So again, just really flat as this bike. And yeah, the other side of things is it's specialized 
you know, they've been doing e-bikes for a while now, so they've got the whole backed up thing sorted really, really well. You know, dealers like Joe, fully on board. They'll always keep you as often as they can. You know, e-bikes aren't perfect. They do break down occasionally, but I remember once reading the uh, job application for specialized warranty guy or woman. I've never seen such a comprehensive and like amazingly detailed and kind of diligent customer service document. I'm blown away. You know, there's pages and pages of just like the best kind of treatment you could give people. And that counts for a lot when you're dropping seven and a half K on a bike. The fact that, you know, you're properly backed up. Okay, so back at base now. Uh, and hopefully you can see that on the screen. Uh, if not, I'll just flick it up as an indent. But yeah, 60% battery left, 36.6K of absolutely awesome, rocky Cody Brennan, finest single track in the bag. Uh, Joe's just checking in at the shop. And uh, now I think we're gonna hit the uh, tour trail, which is the actual original Red Bull trail here. So kind of got to go and do that one. But so far, I'm, I'm proper, I thought I would be grabbing the range extender now because that adds another Oh, I can't do the maths. 175, I think, what hour? Yeah, it takes you up to 500 watt hours anyway. So, uh, but you know, rather than the standard 326, but I think we're good. I'm gonna keep it light, keep it agile, make the most of this. Okay, tour trail, here we go. <laughs> what used to be the old Red Bull, the original, when Visit Center used to be over the far side. Oh, 20k left. Let's see if we can manage it without the extender. Not gonna lie. I'm using a bit of cheeky trail now. Just to keep up with Joe. As we get right up on top of the slabs. And it is fairly vocal this motor compared to the standard Levo, which is super quiet. This is quite a noisy motor in comparison. And also, if you really dig deep, you are gonna, you know, bury that 240 watt max output. It's gonna get overwhelmed by your legs, so you're not gonna be feeling it as much. But, <laughs> yes! I didn't last that last time, nothing about it. We'll have to do that again. Oh yeah, we will have to do that again. Right, I know what's happening this time. There you go. Yeah, ain't that SL. Still suck up a drop nicely. Even if there is a little bit of shimmy on landing. It's all good. <laughs> I think we should have hit that faster, Joe. <laughs> I think your second run through it would be a lot smoother. Oh. But this is why it's worth driving four hours across the country to come to Cody Brennan. All this kind of stuff. It's just, you know, this is the stuff that, I mean, this is actually a new section, but very much in keeping with what Daffy did originally. Proper old school, gnarly single track. But just stays brilliant to ride, whatever the weather. And that's the other thing about he bikes really, you know. It's just that little bit of assist when the trails are maybe really mucky or really filthy. That's what I've noticed. 
Yeah, people really enjoy them because you can still go out yeah, as long as you're not damaging the trails. You can still go out, climb stuff. You don't have to be pushing or sliding through normally. It's super easy. Another thing I haven't mentioned about this Creo motor is the drag when you get it over that 25 kilometer an hour limit it's pretty much minimal I think it's one and a half watts I mean that's less than what a clutch rate adds in transmission so you know it really doesn't matter if you do run out of battery and I've ridden this bike around Leeds bike park for two hours with the motor off just to see what it's like and not to be fair still dropping people on the climbs and it handled great so no worries there <laughs> oh, keep me here to keep me. turn the camera off and it just gets proper exciting again original snap crackle and pop section there <laughs> we don't need that oh that's what you get from taking your hand off the bike to switch the gopro on turns out we've done snap and crackle we still have pop left so i think catch up with joe on the big lead man but this is it does not mind i think you'll have noticed all the way through it's been happy closing joe down when it's techy and like i say just making it a little bit lighter a little bit less punishment through the forks. You buzzing a bit there, Joe? A little bit. <laughs> Maybe 34 for the win. Good. Now this is the actual OG Cody Brennan Red Bull Trail for Rocky Horror. <laughs> so good to ride this again. After so, I mean. I didn't ride this when it came over with Brian because I'd have to leave him with the, the cap. So I think, God, I've probably not ridden this. Shameful to say, I've probably not ridden this. This century. <laughs> oh, this takes me back. Yes, Joe. What's right? And this bike, you know, and obviously. There is competition from the Fazua bikes. Similarly light, not quite as light, but actually slightly more powerful. Slightly smaller battery, slightly bigger battery. And on the Fazua, you've got the option to completely remove the battery and motor system together. So, you know, that makes for an even lighter bike. With zero drag for pedaling, so that's quite an interesting option. And generally, spec for spec, they're cheaper too. And in many ways, very similar. You know, right down to the fact that they're pretty softly sprung. So if you want to run them in trail rather than fully open, if you want to push on, sort of bike park and burn stuff. But the integration on this spec it's such a big part of it that mission control app lets you tune exactly how you want the motor to behave gives you all that feedback I mean I know that's something that's coming on Fazua but Specialized have definitely set the bar very high and it's just such a neat looking bike as well you know just with that little power assist button there on the left there's no big sort of LCD screen getting in the way. And apart from that, a little bit of motor noise and that little bit of display on the top tube, you really could forget you're on an e-bike. Apart from the fact that it turns back up in again, you've got 50k in your legs. Life's a bit easier. The one thing I haven't really talked about on this bike, it's kind of spec levels. Uh, this one's got this AGX, Performance Elite 34 T-Fork, uh, Performance DPS Rich Shock, 
really nice row valve control 29 carbon wheels so they're definitely a highlight they're a real ride upgrader and yeah nice and smooth help with speed sustain across sections <laughs> like this original fully armored red bull goodness here on pins and needles and specialized zone bar so decent width 780 mil their own grips their own saddles which are always excellent it's actually an x fusion post again simple super reliable different length strokes for different size bikes so that's 150 on this large but extra large gets 175 smaller bikes get 125 I've already said it's a standard eagle shifter so you've got all the upshifts or downshifts you want it's like a single shift and again that really kind of just plays into the agility of this bike the fact that you know you are going to have to assist it a bit more through the pedals but on the flip side it's just more playful and easy to move around oh and it's still hella smooth along here <laughs> as you can see this is pretty rocky the boys built this to last <laughs> they were not messing around when they put this section together hell no I think we're into flight path kind of the original jump line <laughs> which puts the kind of level of mountain biking back when this was being done into perspective really remember you know context of getting out of the mountain trail pretty damn rare because we're all riding 26 inch hardtails then pretty much a few suspension bikes but only just starting to become an option and yeah but that's why this bike is so great, yeah. Because you have got to put some effort in. You know, there's no uplifting these bad boys. It's you putting the energy in. But that means you just get that extra level of involvement and kind of reward. You burn the fun bits. So, and you still gain that sensation on this SL because it isn't just a complete kind of winch setup then even in trail now still got a, a bit of burning to my legs to keep up with Joe in front but what's interesting is even though he's got the 700 watt battery in and yeah he's got a alloy bike so it's a bit heavier than the carbon equivalent would be but even so we kind of equally matched on battery use and it may be a bit lighter a bit fitter I think Joel can see that but still it's way closer than I was expecting this has been genuine eye opener I really has Whew. Whew. yeah it's official Whew. okay R74 the last section of the far side of Cody Brandon got 54k on the clock and I'm giving it some turbo although to be honest I haven't actually pedaled yet so you can't tell oh no there you go oh yeah I mean hell it's not exactly overwhelming power but it's definitely a bit more especially at lower cadence you know when you're just getting a couple of turns in between these rocks Short back end slide. You can just pick up a bit more speed when you're not flowing. Oh, I think that pool, pool noodle in the tire took a beating then. But this is just such a sorted frame, it just looks so neat. And the fact the battery's enclosed makes it like stiffer, makes it stronger. You still get the battery out. 
you have to remove the motor, but it's not you know, a massive deal. So it also means you know, you're not worried about people stealing your battery. You don't have to lock it on. It doesn't come loose. As happens with other designs, you know. Oh, <laughs> Flexi 34 moment there. You know, and you do have them. But like I say, it's just, gives you that bit more alive. It's a bike that loves to be hustled. Especially in turbo. Ha-ha! <laughs> I just pop in a bit higher than Joe there. Everything's just a little more amped up, a little more lively. As much as I love the lever. Oh, hello. Wait. Ah, oh, you got me. Stall turned me. Oh, that's when turbo is handy. Because my legs are pretty fried. Doing most of this in eco. Yeah. Has had a draining effect on me. Even though doesn't seem to have had a similarly draining effect on the battery, which is the big surprise. And again there, it's got that ability to knock it down a couple of gears. And just one. But there you can see Joe's got the power there to pull away. Compared to the SL engine. What are we bringing it back? Come on. Fight back, guys. Last few K. Don't let him ruin you now. <laughs> ah, such an awesome day out. There's just no way I'd have ridden this much trail this quickly without this bike to help. So, I guess the answer is, is there a point in a small battery small motor, lower powered e-bike and I have to say after smashing out over 50k some of the best single track in the world and still having power left hell yes this has been an absolutely awesome experiment with a serious successful ending I'd say so, get yourself out here to Cozy Brendan. Get yourself booked in to Joe and the staff of X Bikes or, you know, go to the Holy Trail in Abba. Go ride an Ontarian. But definitely try an Evo SL if you don't want a full blown e bike, or even if you do. But you don't just want to be massively overbiked. Give one a go. Now that was an experiment worth doing. Mate. Whoa. Covid elbow Boom. bump. Yes, mate. That was awesome. Thank you so much. There you go. And there's where you can hire him as well. So yeah, I mean, the really, really impressive thing about this old adventure, I mean, besides how well the bike's handled and how much fun I've had, is the fact that, you know, still got 26% battery left. Uh, I'm amazed at that, you know, three hours 20, and 57.7K, uh, and I think, you know, you'll, you'll know from the footage, it was not an easy 57.7. We've been uh, proper playing hard on that, so, you know, if you're wondering whether this Levo could, uh, this Levo SL could put in a proper ride, Hell yes, and that's before we even had the extender. So that's been the live ride review. Uh, massive thanks to Joe from Bikes Brennan thanks, guys. for loaning me the demo bike and for showing me around the trails and uh, for, you know, put, put me in the hurt locker a few times, I've got to say, that's very with, that, with, that, with that extra power. And uh, big thanks to Specialized for sponsoring the video as well. Uh, massive thanks to them for kit of one more testing and also Camelback and Dexcel socks were in there as well. 
Uh, but massive th thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. And if you like what I'm doing, please consider sponsoring me on Patreon as well. But I've been Guy Kesterman. This has been Guy Kes TV with Joe from Bikes Brennan at Cody Brennan on the specialized Turbo Levo SL Carbon Expert. It's I think right. I got that right. Yeah. Well done. Cheers, Joe. Thank you. Seriously, get out to Cody Brennan. Get a bike from Bikes Brennan. The best day out. Been awesome. Alex.